from the sharpening bench we have a classic oldie but a goodie from the now extinct Lone Wolf Knife Company designed by Bill Harsey we have the Lone Wolf D2 not T2 D2 hmm interesting stick with me guys we will take a look at this and oh isn't it beautiful hi gang Rob here it's the evening of 7 May 2015 and this blade shows up at the Apostle P sharpening bench courtesy of my customer Sam who has a pretty sweet collection and I was just tickled when I heard he was sending me this. Uh, some of you guys are aware of Lone Wolf Knives. I think in 2012 or 2013 they were swallowed up by the monolith that is Benchmade. And they made the Lone Wolf product line for oh about a year, maybe two in some models and then discontinued it. I just love it when that happens, don't you? big company by a small company to put it out of business hmm. well that's what happened this line of knives designed by Bill Harsey William W Harsey uh, was pretty famous in tactical knife circles most of you have probably seen the T2 and T3 uh, and the D2 is this, has the same dimensions as the T2. And let's talk about them real quickly. A blade length of 3.9 inches in a, oh gosh, what would you call that? A graceful drop point, full flat ground of S30V steel, about 115 thousandths thick. Nice and thin behind the edge. My 15 degree secondary bevel, not too broad at all. What do you think? 25, 30 thousandths, probably behind the edge, didn't measure it. A very nice, uh, I would say probably a PVD coating, definitely not a paint. It's almost kind of translucent. You can really see the stone wash through it. Beautifully done. The handle of this knife is a pretty standard old school construction. Stainless steel liners, fairly thick, probably oh, 50 thousandths or so. Liner lock mechanism. Pretty slick deployment via thumb studs, and they can be accessed by either the right or left hands. Knife is fairly ambidextrous were it not for this silly tip down right hand only clip. And we'll talk about that clip just a little. These handles are some kind of a fiberglass reinforced nylon with a rubber over mold almost like a Gerber you know gator grip kind of handle um, the clip is also extremely stiff Sam actually has this one bent just a little bit it's barely making contact but still it's so stiff <clears throat> if it's tight enough to hold the knife in your pocket this tacky sort of rubber rubberized finish really grabs your pants uh, you know good luck getting it in and out Maybe if you had it clipped to, uh, you know, some tactical nylon that's a little slipperier than cotton fabric, it would insert and extract a little more easily for you. <clears throat> so the handle length about 4.9 inches, giving us an overall length of 8.8. .8. Handle thickness, it's a little chubby, about 5 eighths of an inch, 630 thousandths or so. <clears throat> Weighs in at 5.7 ounces, uh, so it's a near 4 inch folding tactical blade. Not super thick stock. <clears throat> it doesn't appear to be a particularly overbuilt handle. It seems a little heavy for, the, for its dimensions to me. So maybe there's a reason for that. Hmm. Maybe there is a reason for that. Let's take a bit of a macro look here it 
See anything interesting? See anything that normally would give me fits but I haven't complained about? See how that Ricasso is nowhere near the end of the plunge grind and it's got this weird unsharpened heel at the back? What on earth do you suppose that is for? Hmm. Beautifully jimped knife in the liners on the thumb ramp of the blade and the locking leaf. If you're going reverse grip, nice jimping for the index finger. Superb folding fighter, I think. Let's see if we can figure out what on earth that goofy sharpening notch and heel could possibly be for. Huh. And then there's this, I don't know what this is, maybe there was a some kind of a flaw in the nylon handle underneath the uh, rubber overmold. Can you see that sort of round depression there? Feels kind of funny too. Well, hmm, I think that's because it's a double action automatic. Oh yeah, isn't that cool? Yeah, the heel of the blade, let's see, let me open it for you. The heel of the blade is propelled. Can you see that shiny spot under, in that big torsion bar? In the bottom of the blade well that shiny spot is where that heel rubs as the bar flings the blade out and I'm really glad that Sam warned me about that before I you know got the Dremel out and finished that Ricasso and took that heel out of there um, you know because I've been known not to exactly study the closed position workings of knives uh, and this would have been a shame to ruin in such a fashion. Company's out of business. Uh, Benchmade's not making lone wolf knives anymore. They did make the D2 for a very short time and rumor has it that they were garbage. Uh, torsion bars would break. It's not good. Now this knife <clears throat> It's kind of special. Don't know exactly when it was made, you know, given the fact that it's S30V steel. You know, we probably can assume it's after 07 or 08. But they were rare when they were made. And they're even more rare now, I would venture to guess. Uh, just doing a little quick research on the internet. It looks like these knives are doing between 250 and five hundred dollars on the secondary market and I think that when they were in production <clears throat> streeted for about 250 so um, if you guys know better than I please uh, please weigh in kind of a neat knife now this pivot is locked up tight um, Sam had asked if I might try to help the centering of this knife a little bit and I just couldn't do much uh, trying to shift scales to do it because the pivot I can't budge. I don't know if it's got red Loctite in there or brown Loctite that's been there for seven or eight years, but I can't move it. It does have a, a fair amount of side to side play and even a little bit of up and down. I'm sure it's been fired, you know, more than a hundred times in its life. The lockup is a little late, as you can see. I don't think it's the ball's definitely not touching the opposite liner, but uh, you know there's a little play in the knife and the pivot's kind of loose and things we would object to in a new knife. Things that were you know fairly common 10, 15, 20 years ago. Don't think this knife has been used much as far as cutting in its life. It, it appeared to have. Uh, Pretty much a factory bevel. It might have seen a couple touch-ups in its life. The bevel on this side, uh, the left side of the blade, was very scant, and the bevel on the right side was about the width that you see now. So I had to even it up a little bit, and, you know, give it the usual 
And because it's uh, full flat ground and so thin behind the edge, it is a vicious slicer. Vicious. I think you're going to be pleased when this thing comes home, Sam. You know, is this a knife that I would carry every day as a defensive tool or an offensive tool? Heck no. They're too rare and they're worth too much. Is it a knife that I think is really, really cool? You know, when you're hanging out with your buddies and you show them your, your little lone wolf liner lock and you flick it open a couple times and then, you know, while you're just standing there talking all of a sudden, wham! Out it comes. How cool is that? There's something really cool about this double action too. The blade is under no tension after 45 degrees from closed. That big old strong torsion bar has enough tension to propel the blade by inertia past that point in the last 135 degrees of its arc. opens with authority and it's super easy to close one-handed because of where the tension stops very cool I mean very cool and you know you can use it all day long as a conventional liner lock sweet just don't plan on carrying it in khakis or jeans but man what a piece of history what a piece of history Thank you, Sam, for sharing it, and uh, just thought you guys would like to see this. We love this kind of stuff, don't we? Oh. This is why I sharpen in my spare time. Just on the chance something like this shows up now and then. So cool. That's all for this one, my friends. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And remember the word and Sam's Harsey D2 are sharp.